Okay, let's discuss how we can determine the size requirement of a rainwater harvesting system. Now, in a rainwater harvesting system, there are several um, components that determine uh, what kind of configuration you need uh, in the system. First off, how much rainfall you can collect, which depends on the amount of rainfall you are receiving over a period, generally over a year. Then the area of the roof, when we are calculating the area of the roof, it's very important that you calculate the plane area, not the slope area of the roof. And then there is a storage tank. Um, if, storage, uh, if the storage tanks come for free, then of course the bigger the better, uh, but uh, they don't come for free. so. Uh, there is a certain cost-benefit consideration there as well. So there is no point of having a huge tank uh, when you cannot collect enough rainfall. Um, on the other hand, you have the demand. Um, how much water you really need. So uh, these three factors, namely the amount of collection, the size of the tank and the demand, they influence each other. So how do you calculate uh, the size of a rainwater harvesting tank? Uh, there are um, many methods. Um, now, for example, um, uh, this is uh, the United Kingdom's uh, British standards. They, they propose three basic methods, uh, which are, of course, common sense. Uh, the first is what they call simplified approach. That is, they provide a series of um, lookup diagrams um, for different uh, number of people in households. This diagram is for four people, so there is upper limit. This upper limit is the tank capacity that you know will satisfy 100% uh, of the non-fertable water demand of that four people. So there is no uh, financial case for household systems to build bigger tanks than that, unless you are using it for. Um, household agriculture or some other purpose. So then, depending on the size of your roof area, roof plan area, um, and depending on the amount of rainfall you are receiving, so these are the different annual rainfall amounts in different parts of the United Kingdom. So then uh, you can select, for example, uh, if your roof area is about 45 square meters and if your rainfall is 1000 millimeters per year, then uh, the best tank size probably is about 1.5 cubic meters. And if it is, uh, if you have double the size of the roof, then you can go for three because it's a, these are linear relationships. So that is the first way of doing that. And second so-called intermediate approach is uh, you can calculate 5% um, of the annual water yield. So that is the amount of water you get um, from your roof, uh, from the rainfall, and you get 5% of that, like this. And then um, you also calculate the non-potable water demand per year, and you calculate 5% of that as well. Then um, if... Uh, uh, this number is bigger, then you have enough water. Uh, if this number is bigger, you have enough demand. So you, to match it, you select the minimum of the two. So there is even a calculator this company has uh, provided where you can do this uh, sort of calculation online. For example, 45 meters squared and then uh, you can calculate it like that and then there is also a runoff coefficient usually uh, you can assume it to be about 0.9 or 0.8 now the british standard also provides a detailed approach that is if you really want to get the hang of it it's because rainfall varies year over year as well as within the year uh, depending on the climatology, in certain parts you get rainfall very much concentrated in several months of the year. Then this kind of simplified calculations will not uh, give you accurate enough figures. For that, the best possible approach is 
collect rainfall data. You don't need very high resolution rainfall data for this. Um, even monthly rainfall data can do uh, a lot here. And if you have daily, that is more than enough. So if you collect like at least three to five years of rainfall data or if more, then you can run a sort of a simple simulation where you can see how a certain size system would behave. By doing that, you can get a pretty good idea about what kind of size uh, do you need. So what I'm going to show you now is, uh, uh, is such application that uh, we have been using for the uh, country of the Maldives. So this particular application is customized to work best for the Maldivian context uh, because rainfall data is for that country. Of course, you can customize it very easily to match for another country. So you start with the roof area. Let's say you have 60 square meter roof area. Um, and then you can select a tank size, let's say uh, 5,000 liters or 5 cubic meters, one tank of, the, of that size. Um, then uh, the daily demand for water. In this context, um, there is an easy calculator where you can use. So total potable use, uh, water use is about 100 liters per person. Sorry, the per, uh, total non-potable water use. Um, but uh, let's keep it um, for like drinking and cooking purposes, which is a common case uh, in the Maldives. And let's say there are five people in the household. So then you can calculate the daily water demand. And then here you select uh, Maldives is a country that is extending from north to south quite a long way and the rainfall changes quite a lot. So you, you have to select which province you want to work with. Depending on that, the rainfall uh, regime is quite different. Uh, rainfall can vary from 2300 in the south atolls and about 1700 uh, in the north. And then um, this rainwater harvesting system, are you going to use it year round only for the dry period? You can do it like this, for example, the whole year or select the dry period or you can customize it. Then after that, when you are satisfied, you can calculate the behavior of the system. And then what you get is a graph like this. So here for this particular system, because we, we have selected the rather large roof area, uh, because of that, you can see that uh, the performance of the system, that is um, uh, during the period, this is 1991 to 2018, we are using 28 years of rainfall data. For that simulation, uh, the, the percentage of uh, days that people go without water in the system is about 0.5%, very, very little. So. On the other hand, if you have a smaller roof size, then you can see it increases. And similarly, if you have a smaller tank size, let's say half the size, then also it increases. And uh, here you, you receive uh, several important information. One is how many days as a percentage you go without water and how many days um, that you can supply and also uh, how much water is captured by this rainwater harvesting system and how much is the overflow. So it will be interesting for you to see that there is a deficit and overflow at the same time. Why this happens is uh, because during certain seasons you get a lot of rainfall but there is no space to store it in our tank and in some other times you get very little rainfall uh, but there is the water demand. So that rainfall variability causes um, this uh, issue. So here it shows the results as uh, on the time series. So you can see um, this middle graph is the, uh, the variation of rainfall. So you can see it for different uh, years like this. And then the top graph shows the variation of water demand you can it has this kind of zigzag shape because 
we are using water uh, only in a certain uh, season and then the amount of storage in our tank how it behaves and how much water is supplied uh, you know when the uh, green line is coinciding with the dotted yellow line that means we are supplying all right uh, but uh, in certain periods for example here this is the worst performing year by the way that's why it is marked in uh, pink uh, so here you can see that uh, very little supply compared to the demand of water uh, so this kind of detailed uh, calculations can be quite helpful uh, in order to understand how your rainwater housing system behaves and you can do similar calculations if you know uh, good climate uh, uh, climate scenario related rainfall simulations you can calculate it for the future scenarios as well.